Hey, Tommy from The Run Testers with another multi-tester review. In this video, most of The Run Testers are gonna be talking about the ASICS Nova Blast 3. Let's dive in. The ASICS Nova Blast 3 costs £135 or $150. It weighs in at 237 grams or 8.4 ounces for men in a size eight, and the drop is eight millimeters. The A6 Nova Blast 3 is a daily running shoe designed to combine plenty of cushioning and comfort with a versatile ride. The latest version sees FF Blast Plus midsole foam added to lower the weight and improve responsiveness. It also features a thin tongue wing construction to improve the fit, a more supportive heel design, a jacket mesh upper for breathability and an AHAR outsole to improve durability. So I do find that the Nova Blast 3 fits a little bit long for me. It hasn't been a real problem running in it in my normal size, but yeah, it's a little bit too much room in the toe box there. Don't need that much room, so I probably would go half a size down in it. But the, hit, the fit has been completely fine around the heel and midfoot during my runs, so no concerns there. On fit then, easy one for me. This shoe kind of comes up long for me. It's like a thumb's width at least long in the toe box, and it makes it kind of feel a little bit boat-like. I found that actually with the old Nova Blast 2 and the original Nova Blast one. So my instinct would be to kind of go half a size down. Everywhere else around the foot, I found like the fit was really good. It holds the heel well. I get good lace lockdown. There's enough room across the kind of midfoot for me. So I'm hoping that half a size down wouldn't make that too much of a squeeze, but I, I think they're roomy enough to drop down half a size. And I certainly want to do something to make them feel a little bit more compact on the foot. So half a size down would be my recommendation. So the fit for me in the Nova Blast 3, I would say true to size, um, but it is a little bit of a roomy shoe at the front. There's a little bit of extra space in there. Um, it's, a, it's the same thing that I found with the previous two Nova Blast versions, um, but I, I think it's the right size for me. I wouldn't size up or down in this shoe just because of the fit of the rest of the shoe. Um, especially if you've got a wider foot, you might have issues because it's not really designed um, for people with wider feet. So if you start um, getting a, a, a shorter version of the shoe so that your feet aren't um, don't have a lot of space at the front, you might find that it becomes a little bit narrow. Um, so I would stick true to size in the Nova Blast 3. So fit for me was okay in my UK size eight. I will say the more running that I've done in it, I think the more I've noticed that maybe it does run a little bit long for me. It's not terrible, but I think, you know, that it is worth maybe looking at playing around with the half, kind of going half a size down potentially, um, definitely based on my kind of testing. Um, elsewhere, obviously there are changes in the upper from the previous Nova Blast and they've been absolutely fine for me in terms of, you know, how it's been out on my runs. I think the, you get a nice kind of um, lockdown in terms of the lace and the tongue combination um and kind of from the midfoot and the heel i got a nice feel from from that point of view as well so yeah i think solid overall in terms of fit maybe look at going half a size down potentially because it can run a little bit long um based on my testing run test for me then i've done 50 miles in this shoe a range of paces a range of terrains some paved some road a little bit of stony river path off-road which i usually do and for me, a couple of things, step-in comfort of this shoe I think is, it was brilliant. I, you know, when I first put it on, it was pretty comfortable, mainly around the heel in the kind of the wrap of the, the uppers, all that kind of stuff. As I've mentioned, just a bit long in the foot, which made it feel like a bit more of a sort of more shoe on the foot than some others. And I think that kind of carries over into the run. I do feel like these aren't quite as compact and agile and nimble as some of the other daily trainers that you get out there. I much kind of prefer the sort of slightly more stripped back feel of the Puma Velocity Nitro 2, certainly of the Socony Endorphin Speed 3. They just feel a little bit less shoe on the foot. I find these, I found it with an Overblast 1, I found it with an Overblast 2. They ju I'm just really aware that I'm wearing the shoes. They feel a bit clunky and a bit sort of chunky for me, but that's, I prefer something a little bit lighter and a little bit more stripped back. Having said that, Nova Blast 2, I found that the ride, this, this kind of massive stack of midsole cushioning was a little bit soft and sinky. Some people I know out there found that you get a lot of punch and they got sort of had joyful runs out of this and you get 50-50 where people would sort of come onto the channel and say, I can't believe you don't like the way that it rides, but I definitely found them a little bit leg sapping. They, they didn't quite, I, my foot would sink in and have to work quite hard to lift it off and get going again compared to some other shoes. I do like to run in a firmer shoe, so I was hoping that these shoes would correct that with the new foam. And I do think they've taken a step on. I still don't think they're as punchy and as springy and as bouncy as some other shoes. I still don't feel like I get as much kind of roll 
and response and, and energy return or energy at least in the legs uh, compared to something like the Socony Endorphin Speed 3. I still prefer the sort of firmness really and the, and the lighter kind of or the, the more minimal feel of something like the, the Puma Velocity Nitro 2. Um, that said, I have kind of enjoyed this shoe and I think if I was talking about running anything from my really easy, low and slow kind of plodding up to my sort of middle to maybe just beyond the middle kind of range of intensity runs and paces and, and that, you know, for the form that is the equivalent of that, then I think this shoe can do a really, really good solid job. I have enjoyed running it in those conditions. Where I think it kind of lacks a bit is where you kind of go up to those sort of top ranges. Um, and that really hits me sort of in terms of the versatility. Although this is a cheaper shoe than the Sokol Endorphin Speed 3, I think the Speed 3, for example, has a lot more versatility in it and you can almost do anything from easy to fast and racing. I certainly wouldn't go near any kind of sort of top speed training or racing in the Nova Blast 3. Whack it on, go and run for two and a half hours on a Sunday with no particular intent, absolutely fine. Although I still think there are better shoes out there for it, but I think it does a good job and I can see why people like it. And the final thing, I, I feel like, you know, in the wet conditions that I've put it through when I've encountered them in slippy kind of drain hole covers, I'm not sure there's quite as much grip as I would like. I think that could definitely be improved. So I was a massive fan of the Nova Blast 1 and the Nova Blast 2. Uh, I just, when, when the Nova Blast 1 came out, I was really surprised. I wasn't expecting to like it that much. It's a very bouncy cushion shoe. The FF Blast foam that was in it just felt like it was propelling you forward and sort of gave you a feel of um, the more performance foams that you see in uh, running shoes and carbon plate running shoes. It just felt a little bit bouncier uh, and just really you got a little energy return uh, from that shoe. Uh, unfortunately, the Nova Blast one was quite unstable. It was a little bit of a wobbly shoe. It was quite bouncy, but then you it didn't have any stability as well. Uh, so in the Nova Blast 2, ASIC sort of fixed that. Uh, they added a bit more stability to it but for some people it lost a little bit of that magic and that bounce that you got from the, the first version. Um, the Nova Blast 3 is I would say more similar to the Nova Blast 2. Um, it feels a lot sturdier, uh, it feels a lot more stable um, and it's it doesn't for me have as much bounce as was in the Nova Blast 1 so it's a lot, lot it's still lost a little bit of that magic for me but I still think it's a very good shoe um, over the runs that I've done in this shoe what I've found is that the updates that have been made to the Nova Blast 3 which have made it a little bit lighter now it's got this uh, FF Blast Plus midsole foam in it is is a welcome change because the Nova Blast 2 is a little bit heavier there's, there's quite a noticeable difference in the weight between this and the Nova Blast 2 so it's definitely a shoe that's um, more beneficially if you want to run a bit faster, if you don't want to have um, heavy cushion shoes on your feet. Um, but ultimately for me, it does feel pretty similar to the Nova Blast 2. I think it's still a solid shoe for running daily miles in. I think it's a very comfortable shoe. And really, if you were looking at maybe buying one pair of shoes to do everything in from your training miles all the way up to faster sessions and even races, I think it's still probably uh, one of the best options out there but one that veers more towards the cushion side of running. Uh, if you look at shoes like the Hocker Mac 5 um, or the Saucony and Dolphin Speed 3, those are both shoes that are for daily training miles and you can do other runs in them as well. So you can run from slower pace all the way up to faster pace and race day as well. I think the Nova Blast 3 veers more towards that cushioned slower daily training side as opposed to running faster in. As a runner with a rotation of shoes, I definitely wouldn't put this in anything other than uh, easy miles or more sort of general daily training runs. Uh, I think when you start going up to tempo training in this shoe and races, I just don't think it has the pop um, and the speed that most people would want. Uh, out of a daily training shoe like you would get from the Endorphin Speed 3. But having said that, it is just, it's a very solid, good value shoe. It's it's It veers more towards the lower price um, of these sort of daily training shoes that are coming out. So £135 in comparison to the more expensive options like the Saucony and Dolphin Speed 3. Um, and it just is very comfortable. If you're looking for a trainer that um, is just ticks a lot of boxes, it is very good for that. That FF Blast Plus midsole foam is very enjoyable to wear. It's quite cushioned, not necessarily massively bouncy anymore in comparison to the Nova Blast 1, but it does do a great job at limiting impact and keeping the legs nice and comfy over the course of those runs. Um, I wouldn't say it particularly excels in any area. If you wanted to get something that was really cushioned, there are better options out there. If you wanted to get something that was 
equally good at running faster in and was a little bit more lightweight there are far better options out there but if you want something that really sits in the middle and maybe veers more towards those more comfortable runs i think it's probably one of the best options out there and i've really been um uh, enjoying running in this over the last couple of weeks um i wouldn't say i've thought it was the most amazing shoe in the world over those runs but it's still a solid good enjoyable workhorse trainer that can do a little bit more than you can in some other daily trainers so if i reviewed the asics nova blast 3 you know fully after one or two runs i'd be very very positive i'll be singing its praises right now but actually i've gone off it a bit over time uh during the course of my runs with it i think the really wild and fun the bouncy feeling that you get from the shoe straight out of the box just goes away a little bit over time like um first runs in it you've got we've seen you might have seen our first run video on the channel i really did enjoy it i thought this is really springy this is gonna be great a very versatile daily trainer you know it's fantastic that the weight has dropped from the previous version but managed to create a better and more enjoyable ride while also making it more stable like it should be ticking a lot of boxes almost sitting in between the nose blast one and two in terms of fun but still quite stable however since those first couple of runs like i said the ride has died down a bit it's still bouncy uh, it's one you know it's a bouncy daily trainer compared to the rest of the market but it's not quite as bouncy and i don't think it's as versatile as i hoped it was going to be like i still think it's nice shoe to cruise around daily miles easy miles long runs but when i've tried to do anything you know fairly pacey in the shoe it's not felt that great like it's not a heavy shoe by any means but i think it's one of those rare cases where the shoe runs a little bit heavier than it actually is because it is very big especially around the heel very built up around there and when i have started to push the pace in it like it just feels very noticeable on the foot a bit cumbersome a bit hefty um and compared to you know other daily training shoes out there things like the hokemac 5 or the endorphin speed 3 or even the puma velocity nitro 2 it just was a bit big and less kind of comfortable you to use for speed work um, or even kind of progression runs finishing at a steady pace or tempo runs it's you know it's fine it kind of does them but but now that the ride has died down a little it just doesn't feel great at those speedy runs for me so i've positioned this more now as an easy day cruiser a daily mileage hog of a shoe but I wouldn't say it's the most versatile option in that bracket. However, one thing that has changed for the better over time is the outsole, which was very slick first couple of runs in it. On any kind of wet pavement, I had concerns about it slipping a bit, but you know, over the course of testing the shoe, the outsole seems to have roughed up slightly and it now finds purchase more easily on wet tarmac, and it's not really a concern. So I have wrapped up well over 50K in the Nova Blast 3 now, and that's a mixture of indoor and outdoor running, mainly uh, prior to kind of Chicago Marathon. And uh, what I will say is I think those initial couple of runs and it was kind of, it came across in our kind of first run video as well, is actually I really enjoyed running in this shoe. I, it felt enjoyable, it felt exciting, I enjoyed the bounce, but also, you know, I, have, I didn't have the same experience with Nova Blast that maybe the other guys did, and I found it, you know, while I enjoyed the bounce, I almost, um, for the midsole, and obviously you're getting more of that midsole foam here, um, I found it a little bit wild and erratic, and I almost wanted it to be a little bit more controlled and stable, and that is definitely what you get here. I think after those initial first couple of runs, it definitely felt... Um, you know, you're getting a smooth, consistent, reliable ride, which makes it ideal for kind of logging a lot of mileage. I just think it, you know, it wasn't the most excitable, you know, enjoyable feeling of running in this shoe. I think um, when I almost wanted to pick up the pace and go a little bit quicker in it, I don't think it kind of really worked for me from that point of view, which is a little bit disappointing. It's not a bad shoe in any kind of stretch of the imagination. It maybe just doesn't have that, doesn't stand out in the same way that some other daily trainers do in terms of offering something that can work for a variety of kind of speeds and i think it definitely works at kind of slower easy to moderate paces i think when you pick up the pace in this shoe it doesn't quite have that pop that i was looking from you know from it ultimately after those kind of initial couple of runs so outsole wise and kind of the you know the durability side of things i think it's been fine overall um obviously i had some kind of you know issues or you know question marks over how it would work in terms of kind of wetter conditions now asics has offered a or now offers a nova blast 3 tr which bolsters the um the outsole it's kind of it's thicker you're getting something that's going to offer a bit more grip durability um and obviously you know work better in those kind of conditions but generally it worked fine for me from that point of view and i think if you're sticking to kind of you know mainly pavements and dry pavements and roads i think it's going to be absolutely fine a little bit of wet should be fine i think as well based on my testing but that nova blast 3 tr is there if you kind of you're a little bit concerned about that and you want that in that shoe although that pushes the weight up slightly in terms of you know how you compare the two shoes and what how they differ um but yeah, for me, I think it's a it's a solid, you get a solid feeling running in this shoe. It's a smooth ride. Um, it feels very consistent. I think it can work at shorter 
and those kind of longer distances as well. It, it's just if you're looking for something that has a little bit more kind of zip in it, particularly at those kind of faster sessions, I don't think it's quite there. It doesn't quite match up to some other daily trainers that are out there that I think probably will suit you better or suit people better who want that versatility, want that range in terms of how this daily trainer works. I think it works fine. I just think there's probably better options that work better at those quicker paces. Okay, so my verdict on the Aces Nova Blast 3 is that it's still a solid trainer. I don't think there's a massive difference between this and the Nova Blast 2. The most important thing probably to mention about it is the weight. It's a lighter shoe in comparison to the Nova Blast 2, which is a welcome treat because that shoe was getting a little bit heavy, uh, especially if you're looking to do um, running a, a faster pace. Uh, what I would say about this shoe is that it is just a solid trainer that veers more towards cushioning. It, it doesn't excel uh, as a tempo shoe, it doesn't excel as a, a racing shoe. Um, but equally, if you were the type of runner that wanted one pair of shoes, um, and maybe you've just started running, maybe you're just a type of runner that's doing recreational running and you want something that can be a little bit more varied, I think this is a fantastic shoe. It's very comfortable, um, it really does protect the legs, and it's just, yeah, solid shoe all round. Um, I would say that if you are looking for a shoe that is a bit more versatile, you should probably go for the Socony Endorphin Speed 3, which you can not only train in, but you can also race in if you want to, or the Hocker Mac 5, which is a noticeably leaner shoe when you're out running in it. it. You can run a lot faster in that shoe. It doesn't have a plate in that shoe, um, so it has a similar natural feel as the Nova Blast 3, um, but that shoe is just a little bit leaner and a little bit lighter for uh, running at pace. Um, but if you want cushioning in your daily training shoes, no Blastery is a fantastic option. Um, but Nova Blast 2, if you can get it cheaper, I'd still say maybe go for that if you um, want to save a bit of cash. So after one run of the shoe, I thought Nova Blast 3 was, was going to go at the top or very near the top of my rankings of daily trainers. You know, a really versatile, fun shoe. It slipped a bit off that now. I think it's now a good daily trainer and a nice cushioned option for those who want a lighter cushioned shoe with a bit of bounce in it that can handle you know, long runs and easy runs very well. But I think when you're comparing it to the best daily trainers out there, it just doesn't have the versatility I'd like from it. It just feels a bit big on the foot and slightly unnatural at times. So, yeah, the Sorkin Endorphin Speed 3 is still the, the leader in the kind of uh, daily train, you know, all round the shoes category for me. But although that is a bit more pace focused, and if you want a comfier option, then I'd say things like the Hoka Mac 5, the Puma Velocity Nitro 2. They're really good options that I think are just a bit more versatile actually than Nova Blast 3. They're not quite as bouncy as that shoe, but they've got really nice rides. The Hoka Mac 5 is very smooth. Velocity Nitro 2 has a fantastic outsole, so if you can use it for kind of light off-road running as well. Another good option is the Puma Deviate Nitro 2 actually. If you want a plated training shoe, that's got a great outsole and I think performs a bit better than the Nova Blast 3 at speed. This is a very good cushioned shoe, but I don't like it quite as much as I expected to off those first couple of runs. It won't be going in my rotation and I think you can find more versatile day trainers out there there, kind of whatever your preference is, where you're looking for a speedier focus shoe, a more comfortable shoe, a you know a smoother shoe. This is a nice bouncy shoe, but just hasn't proved as versatile as I hoped after my first run. So my verdict on the Asics Nova Blast 3 then, I thought maybe I might finally be a convert to the Nova Blast range. I'm still not 100% sure I would invest in this. It wouldn't be my first choice as a daily trainer. I don't think it'd necessarily be my first choice as even a sort of slow recovery shoe. I do think it's a good shoe. I understand why people like it. Uh, I definitely think it performs better at kind of slower end of and easier end of the runs than kind of faster. Um, I, I do get why people kind of like that really sort of ample cushioning. It does deaden the impact. Uh, it's a little bit soft for me, but I will say this, but I always like shoes that sort of run sort of slightly firmer. I also just, for me personally, feel like it just lacks a little bit of agility. It just feels like a little bit more shoe on the foot than I really would like all the time. That said, I think a very, very solid shoe. I think I can see why people like it. And I think at the price, it should totally be up there in consideration when you're thinking about maybe buying an easy day recovery shoe that maybe can do a little bit more of your daily training as well. So my verdict on the Asics Nova Blast 3 is that it is a very solid daily training shoe. But aside from those initial couple of runs that I did with them, it definitely felt less exciting to run in as a kind of daily training shoe. I think um, it's definitely more controlled and more stable than previous Nova Blast that I've um, run in. And I kind of put it in the category of shoes that I've run in, things like the Night Pegasus 39, the Hocker Clifton 8, 
things like New Balance Fresh Foam 1080 V12, where I think you can log a lot of mileage in these shoes and it will be solid and consistent and you'll get a smooth, kind of reliable kind of feeling from these shoes. But you may be, if you're looking for something to run a little bit quicker in or use for faster sessions, it maybe doesn't have that same feeling. But if you are looking for something like that with the same kind of versatility, I would look at things like the Puma Velocity Nitro 2, uh, the Hocker Mac 5, and I would look at the Mac 4 as well. Um, again, the Endorphin, Sockney Endorphin Speed 2 and Speed 3, those give you that range in terms of running a little bit easier and slower and maybe picking the pace up. And then if you want to do kind of some faster, quicker kind of interval and track sessions, then I think those shoes will work a lot nicer from that perspective. So I think, yeah, the No Blast 3 is a solid shoe overall. Is it the best daily trainer, the most excitable daily trainer that I've used? Maybe not. Um, will Nova Blast fans absolutely love it i think it'll be a mixed bag in terms of you know if you enjoyed that kind of really bouncy aggressive feeling it's maybe not as present in this shoe so that's something to be wary of uh, if you're looking at the latest version so that's it from us on the asics nova blast 3 thanks a lot for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon it really does make a difference and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got for the latest road and trail shoes as well as running headphones and watches out at the moment and don't forget we've got a monthly podcast that comes out at the end of every month if you go into the caption below you can find the link to listen to that on the podcast provider of your choice thanks a lot for watching catch you next time